So what does a concussion return to sport, return to play protocol look like? Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Heisig. I'm a concussion specialist, and we're going to look at what it takes to get an athlete from concussion back onto the field, the ice, the court, whatever. Um, so this is a six stage process and it does not last seven days. It lasts longer than seven days. I don't know what the NFL is doing. I don't know what certain athletes are doing, uh, but if you legitimately sustained a concussion, so if you're an athlete watching this, you're a parent watching this, if you legitimately sustained a concussion, uh, there's a metabolic deficit that occurs. Uh, so your brain loses about 20% of its energy metabolism uh, in those first three to five days. And it takes about two to three, uh, really three to four weeks uh, to get that energy level back to normal. So if you return at day seven, you're kind of at the end of that dip. And if you take a repeat concussion there, you have a repeat uh, head injury, you risk having a more severe metabolic deficit that might have more long-term damage or at the very least is going to prolong and kind of worsen your recovery. So you want to do it right the first time. And doing it right the first time really is about as fast as, if not faster than recovering from an ankle sprain. Um, so take it seriously. Concussion return to play protocol has six stages, symptom limited activity, aerobic activity, sport specific activity, non-contact practice, contact practice, and then we actually get back out into the game. So we're gonna go through that step by step to kind of tell you what should be happening in each stage. Stage one is your symptom limited activity. So this is kind of what it sounds like. You're gonna to return to normal school work activities, um, but in symptom limited chunks. So you're gonna do this in ways where your symptoms don't flare more than two points on a 10 point scale. And the goal here is really just so that you're not a hermit, and so that you're kind of reintroducing uh, graded exposure back into normal life. That stage will last five to seven days. Um, what we're gonna do there before we move into stage two or how we start stage two is we do a Buffalo concussion treadmill test. Stage two is that light aerobic exercise. Like I just said, we start that with a Buffalo concussion treadmill test. So we throw you on a treadmill or we throw you on a bike um, and we're looking to find your exercise tolerance. Usually uh, after a concussion, you're gonna have symptoms flare between 50 and 70% of your heart rate max. Um, and so we wanna find that. We wanna make sure that we take you a little bit below that and prescribe you some aerobic exercise to get that heart rate up to improve your CO2 tolerance. Uh, improving exercise tolerance improves physical, cognitive, emotional, and sleep symptoms. So we wanna do that early. Um, when we do that early, we actually reduce your risk of prolonged concussion symptoms or persistent concussion symptoms, PCS, by about 48%. Stage three is when we start to introduce more sport-specific exercise, more running, skating, agility drills. I personally will differ from the guidelines and I'll introduce some light resistance training here. So light meaning about 30 to 60% of your one rep max. So it should feel really easy, um, but I just wanna maintain some of the movement patterns that you might need for your sport. Um, and really what we're doing there is trying to add more dynamic movement. Um, before we move on to stage four, which is non-contact practice. So stage four, uh, non-contact practice. What we're doing here to even get into stage four is you for sure have wanted to introduce some agility and some functional movement, uh, maybe some light resistance training. If you haven't introduced resistance training, you are introducing it by stage four and you've passed your Buffalo concussion treadmill test. You have to pass your Buffalo concussion treadmill test. We need to know your aerobic kind of autonomic tolerance is uh, up to par before we put you back into a sports situation, even if it is non-contact. Um, we want to make sure that you're functioning well. So with non-contact, we're adding uh, harder training drills. You're actually going into passing drills or some of the team systems just to reintroduce kind of the thinking of the game and the speed of the game, uh, improve your exercise coordination, kind of cognitive abilities that you need for sport. That brings us to full contact practice or stage five. Before entering stage five for a full contact practice, uh, we actually recommend, it's really uh, a good thing, to have athletes pass an exertion protocol. So there's an exit protocol, there's a Gapsky Goodman, also called Chicago Blackhawks protocol. Uh, but really what we're doing is we're, we're pushing you at game-like intensities. We're, we're crushing you on a bike. We're having you do agility drills. We're having you do things where you're moving your head up and down uh, while your heart rate is up to 80, 90% of your heart rate max. And really what you, we want to do is exert you there and see that you don't have symptoms at game-like intensities. And then we're also going to repeat your baseline test to see that you didn't uh, you can exert yourself and you can cognitively and neurocognitively perform. You can balance, you can do all the things that you need to do to be an athlete. That's when we're going to allow you to go back to full contact practice. And really, once you get back to full 
contact practice. We're restoring the confidence that you have recovered from this concussion, that you can play with your boys, your girls, your team. Um, and really, it's a time for the coaching staff and, and everyone else to say that, yeah, hey, this individual is performing like they should. Um, and so once you've done two to three full contact practices, uh, we're, we're allowing you to return to sport, stage six, get back to the game. That whole process, I've personally seen that be as fast as 21 days, and I've seen it be as long as 60 days. But the reality is, is we need to make sure that you are performing like you. You're not having symptoms with exercise. You're not showing neurocognitive deficits. You're not showing deficits once exercise starts. Um, that you can perform, you can think, uh, and you can move in, in ways that show that you're actually recovered from this concussion. Uh, so if you found that helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you'd like to learn more about concussion, post-concussion, go ahead and give my account a follow. Thank you for watching.